Thank you for coming back. You're watching Good Morning ASEAN. And now let's move on to a story from Indonesia. A state-owned telecommunication company or uh, PT Telekomunikasi Indonesia or Telkom will continue to expand in Myanmar despite failing to win the tender for mobile phone services in the ASEAN country. Telkom Public Relations Vice President Arif Prabowo said that despite the failure, Telkom would still expand in Myanmar, particularly in low-risk business such as information and communication technology solutions and digital media business. Telkom recently took part in a tender for a license to operate a mobile phone service in Myanmar but failed in the pre-qualification stage. Telkom, which recently opened business in Hong Kong, Timor-Leste, Singapore, Australia and Malaysia, plans to expand in neighboring countries, including Myanmar. Some of its overseas businesses are quite successful. Its subsidiary Telecomunikasi International, or Telin, for example, recorded a 25% increase in customers in Hong Kong in three months, from 25,000 in January to 40,000 last month. The company is one of the top three mobile virtual network operators in Hong Kong, along with British Vodafone and People China Mobile. We're still on Indonesia as Indonesia is currently the world's biggest thermal coal exporter, but the Southeast Asia's biggest economy may have to import the fossil fuel in the next decade to meet its power needs. State-owned PT, PL and Coal Division Haid said in, a, in an interview recently that the country exported 305 million tons of coal last year, but only consumed 67 million metric tons of, for domestic needs. He said at PLN's headquarters in Jakarta that coal consumption was only 18 percent of the total output in 2012, as the rest was exported. But the domestic need for coal will surge in the coming years, and Indonesia may have to import coal to to meet the demand. The division head of cited research that said that while Indonesia's coal reserves were only 3 percent of the world's total resources, the country remains the biggest coal exporter in the world as its exports were higher than its domestic consumption. Indonesia's coal reserves are estimated at 20 billion tons according to data from the country's mining associations, which is smaller than other countries such as China, which has coal reserves of 115 billion billion tons and Australia, which processes around 76 billion tons of reserves. And now we offer a special report on Manila, the next gambling hub in Asia. The opening of the Philippines' latest mega casino in March is an attempt to make the country a gaming hub in Asia, placing it next to leading gambling destinations like Macau and Singapore. Filipino billionaires ventured their money to build casinos in what was dubbed the Casino Rush, which was started last year when the Philippines enjoyed strong economic growth of 6.6% and its stock market was one of the top performers in the world. However, the country's worn-out infrastructure and other concerns, such as corruption, have hindered foreign investment in the Philippines for years. But a growing casino market in which operators are well supported by the government, is believed to keep investors happy. The newly built 1.2 billion U.S. dollar mega casino, called Solaire Manila Resorts, is part of Entertainment City, a 100-hectare complex on Manila Bay. Gambling revenue last year was 1.4 billion U.S. dollars. The gaming complex will have four mega casinos in total, and when completed, it is expected to push the country's gaming revenues up to 10 billion US dollars per year by 2017. According to the Philippine Gaming Corporation, the government regulator which operates most casinos in the Philippines. The expected revenue would expand the Philippines' gaming market by five-fold, outstripping Las Vegas and Singapore, who earn a 6 billion US dollar turnover but still lagging behind Macau's 38 billion US dollar annual revenues. The new casinos are targeting gamblers from Asia, particularly China, Japan, and South Korea, where high rollers live. However, territorial disputes between the Philippines and China in the South China Sea 
may dampen casino visitors from mainland China. Owned by the Philippines' third richest man, Enrique Rason, Solaire has 300 gaming tables, 1,200 slot machines, a five-star hotel with 500 rooms, and 2,000 parking spaces. A new wing is under construction to add 300 all-suite hotel rooms, along with high-end shops. The entertainment complex is located at a strategic location near Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport. The Philippines currently lags behind its regional neighbors, such as Indonesia and Thailand, so it is betting that the new casino will bring in more tourists. The government wants to increase tourist arrivals to 10 million a year by 2016, from 4.3 million last year. This is comparatively small compared to Thailand's 22 million and Indonesia's 8 million tourist arrivals last year. It is also hoped that an increase in tourists will create jobs and increase incomes, particularly in remote areas. The Soler Manila owner said the local gambling market can offer a 30% return on investments. However, an analysis by the economist said that it is questionable whether the local market will grow fast enough to support four new casino resorts that will open one year apart. The opening of the new casino was not without controversy. The selection of the four investor groups to build the casino was allegedly questionable, as the investors were granted exclusive licenses rather than through competitive tender during the term of former President Gloria Arroyo. The licensed recipients were allegedly said to be close allies to the former president. President Benigno Aquino III, however, allowed the project to go ahead. The other three casinos to be completed include one owned by the country's richest man, Henry Tsai, to be opened next year. The other two were owned by Japanese gambling magnate Kasuo Okada and Malaysia's Genting Group, each with partnerships with local Chinese-Filipino tycoons which are expected to be open between 2015 and 2017. And now moving on to the next story, Dentsu of Japan, one of the world's biggest advertising and public relations companies, has won the contract to promote Myanmar's hosting of the Southeast Asian Games in December. According to the Irrawaddy, Tokyo-based dancer said in a statement that it has been appointed by the government of Myanmar as its sponsorship management consultant, Densu, which with dozens of subsidiaries across the world said the contract would be handled by Densu Sports Asia, based in Singapore. In its role as sponsorship management consultant, Densu Sports Asia will work with the Densu Asia branch in Myanmar and other Densu group companies under the Densu Asia umbrella to offer integrated advertising communications proposals related to the 27th Sea Games to existing global, regional and local clients as well as to attract new uh, clients. The games will be held from December the 11th to the 22nd and involve participation by the 10 ASEAN countries. Plus, Tini Timor Leste sporting events are scheduled for Navidal, Mandalay, and Yangon, but concern has been expressed in some quarters about the adequacy of sporting facilities and athletes' accommodation. That wraps up today's editions of Good Morning ASEAN, but don't forget to follow us every weekdays, 7.30 to 8 a.m. on Groom Tep Turkey TV. I am Arawita Misang. And I am Stapat Pat Hong. Have a good day and สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ